Hey scientists, and it's time to get on our lab coats and our goggles as today we will get to show what we know about the structures of plants and animals and how they're able to adapt to their different environments. Before we get into our review activity and you guys prepare for your lesson today, let's first take a look at our essential questions that we have been dealing with for most of this lesson. Now, let's talk about our essential question. Remember, essential questions in science and in different lessons can help us think about what we already know about a topic, and it helps us connect to new ideas that we're going to learn today to help us produce a new, produce a new thought about the topic. Our essential questions will be focused on our different science topic, topics. So look for keywords. In those keywords, the minute you see them and recognize them, I want you to think, what do I already know about this topic? Once you have that in your mind, you want to look at the question again to see what we're trying to answer today or what are we trying to answer about that topic. It's important to remember that an essential question is like a goal as well. By the end of our science lesson, you should confidently be able to answer the essential question. Let's go over our essential question for today. The two different essential questions that we have been dealing with for the lessons for adaptation are listed on the board. They say, what are some structures and functions of animals that allow them to survive in cold weather? And what structures and functions of plants allow them to survive in hot and dry conditions? We have been practicing this whole week learning about different animals, their physical characteristics, as, as well as plants and their characteristics, their needs and nutrients, and how they survive. We've also talked about how different plants and animals in different environments look different because they have adapted to their environments to survive. Today, we are going to review some of our vocabulary activity, and we'll start an activity today in this video, and then you guys will get a chance to finish it as a class. At the end of today's lesson, you're going to get to show us what you know by showing us if you can recall some information about these past few science lessons. Part of the unit. We've talked about animals and plants and the specific vocabulary that go with the individual topics. When we're talking about how animals and plants survive in different environments, we're looking at key, two key vocabulary words for adaptations. The first vocabulary word is functions. Say this vocabulary word with me functions. Does anyone know what this animal is? Can you call it out? This is a picture of a crab, a nicely done, a little crab. So a function is what something does. So we have our little crab here. We can see he has little furries on his leg that help him feel. We can also see his little claws that will help him if predators or prey try to attack him or get him or get them in his grasp. He also has a hard shell to protect himself from being attacked from behind. He has different parts of him that do different things. When we also talked about adaptations, we talk about the structure of something. Over here, we have the structure of a house being built. If you live in a home right now, or if your parents drive in a car, even the school building you guys are currently in, they are all based on different structures. That's the beginning of the buildings. And when we talk about other ways to look at structures, and it, it's an arrangement of parts. So in buildings, it's an arrangement of all the wood parts coming together. In different animals and plants, the structure is how different parts of the plants and animals work together to help provide it with some of its functions. So these two vocab words go together with adaptation. We'll have time to finish it as a class to review the material that we have covered in our adaptations lessons. At the end of today, after you've had time to explore with me and as a group, you guys will then have time to show what you individually know as you take the post assessment on STEM scope. It's important that we pay attention now. If there's anything that you are confused by too, don't be afraid to stop the teacher and ask questions. You want to clarify any questions you have before we begin with our post assessment after we get through this activity. You're closing in on science activity will give you specific key concepts. There are three key concepts that you are going to focus on. The first one is the structure of plants and animals are adapted to particular environments. When we start our different science lessons together in these videos, there's always a little sentence at the beginning, way before we even look at our essential questions. Those sentences represent key concepts that we are trying to work at while we are exploring in the day-to-day -day lessons. 
Your goal for this key concept is to read the passage. While we are reading the passage, and we'll go through this one together, we want to fill in the answers. It's important that when you're reading the passage to read the sentence all the way through. If you hit a blank spot in the middle of the sentence, just say blank. We'll go back and review the answers to see what makes the most sense together. We'll go through the multiple choice questions together. Remember to read all parts of the key concepts before the passages to make sure you don't miss anything in the directions. Key concept one, the structures of plants and animals are adapted to particular environments. Let's go on to read the passage. Any characteristic or trait that helps a plant or animal survive in its environment is called an blank. Since we're at the end of the sentence, we can go ahead and click the blank here. There are four options, rain, tongues, adaptation, and teeth. If we are talking about both rain and animals, there are some of these that I feel like I can eliminate right away. The first one I'm going to eliminate is rain. Rain is not a characteristic or trait of somebody. When we're talking about characteristics or trait, a physical characteristic of an animal can be its tongue or its teeth. But when I think of a plant, a plant doesn't have a tongue or teeth too. If we're referencing both plants and animals here, I think the most reasonable answer that we are going to pick is adaptation. If I also look at back at my key concept, the structure of plants and animals are adapted. It's talking in our key concept how we're focusing on adaptation, so I definitely know that's going to be somewhere in my answers. Let's keep reading. Some structures help plants and animals get food. For example, frogs have long, sticky blank that are useful for catching flies and other insects. Let's click down to see what options we have here. Frogs have tongues, teeth, necks, or beaks. Well, some of these answers I can already eliminate. A frog doesn't have a beak, and I'm pretty sure frogs don't have teeth either. They would scare me a lot more if they did. If I'm thinking about what makes the most sense, I know that frogs catch flies with their tongues. They stick them out. They have really long tongues. So I think this one makes the most sense. If I'm also thinking catching flies and other insects, you can't really do that with your neck. That doesn't make sense. Let's go and keep reading. Our next sentence has to do with cows. Cows have large, flat blank for chewing grasses. Hmm. Chewing. If I think about this word before even looking about my options, I'm going to keep in mind chewing. What do I use to chew? Do I use my beak, my necks, my rein, or my teeth? Well, when I'm chewing food, food as a human, I use my teeth. I'm assuming a cow will use their teeth as well when they're chewing on grasses. Let's go to the next sentence. The underground blank of a plant take in water and nutrients from soil. So the underground blank, we're looking for something that has to do with a plant. And when I think about underground part of a plant, rain does go under the ground, but it already talks about taking in water. The underground rain of a plant taking water and nutrients from the soil doesn't make sense. The stems of a plant aren't under the ground, so that can't be true. And neck is also not part of the plant. The only option that makes sense here is the word roots. Let's keep going. How many birds have long, slender blank for reaching into flowers to feed on nectar? Hummingbirds. We talked a little bit about hummingbirds when we read about Darwin's finches. Hummingbirds have long, slender, is it necks, brain, beaks, or adaptations? We already used adaptations once in our paragraph, so I don't think we're going to use it again. I also am thinking hummingbirds, they're asking for a body part, so rain can't make sense. Hummingbirds have long, slender blank for reaching into flowers to feed on nectar. When I think about feeding, feeding means is another word to eat. Birds that eat they don't really use their necks. They more so use their beaks. That's another word for their mouths. I'm going to go with beaks for this answer. Fill in your answers to match mine as we finish reading the paragraph. Giraffes have long necks that are useful for reaching leaves high above in the trees. Can you think of some other abdentations? What abdentations would be helpful to plants and animals living in the desert? Would these be different from the adaptations of organisms living in the Arctic? 
It's important that we finished reading out this passage here to make sure we didn't miss any other questions or important information. Remember, you're still focusing on that point of different plant and animal structures and how those are going to help them survive. So you want to have those in your picture. You want to draw at least two plant adaptations and two animal adaptations. So you will have four things drawn on your little box here. You might have something different compared to your neighbor. That's okay. And if your drawing skills aren't the best, you can take some time to type out your answers, but make sure you still provide four answers. As you're exploring today, mathematicians, you'll hear from your classmates when you're finished your closing activity. Again, if you have questions or concerns because you can't really answer a question or you're confused about something, make sure to ask your teacher or a neighbor. You want to be confident in going into the showing what you know activity at the end of the lesson today with your post-assessment. You got this, scientists, and I'll see you guys soon.